What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live Monday Night Beer Review. I don't know why I said it like that, but uh, it's been three weeks since I did a live review of any sort. And uh, when I did the last live review, I said we were going to do Chimay Red and we were going to do Chimay Blue and I might have some guests. And guess what? I totally came through for the first time in my life. So I would like to introduce tonight's panel, so to speak. This is not Beer Analysis 101, but we do have the host of Beer Analysis 101, and that is Nick Lowe, a.k.a. Maxwell Star of Maxwell Star's Beer Review. So what's going on, Nick? Yeah, not too much. Recovering from a cold, but I'll live. I need to get some beer in me now. Yeah. And thanks for having me on, by the way. Always, Nick. You're always welcome, just not Greg. Uh, but you know who is to segue into someone that kind of rhymes with Greg? It'd be Craig. And that'd be Craig from Kent Beer Reviews. Or is it Kent from Craig's Beer Reviews? Nobody knows. What's going That's on, Craig? Good. Yeah. Yeah, all good. Cheers for having us. And yeah, it's, uh, I haven't had a Belgian beer for two days. So it's kind of like interesting. Yeah. So, Did, try them sober. Did you get a Rod JD on these beers? Did you? Yeah, I picked these two. Like the uh, three thirty mil bottles for uh, five English pounds, so whatever that is in dollars, don't know. I'm not going to do the conversion. Just let's dollars. say it's pretty cheap. We probably paid the equivalent for one. one I, I probably paid the equivalent for one bottle, let alone two. So, but that was a proper silly deal. So it would have cost me more. So, there you go. Not even Thursday. I'm not on Rod's channel yet. Yeah, here's Rod is in the UK form. Fantastic. Okay. Um, we are also joined by Jesse, who is a home brewer over at Bumpy Road Brewery. Also does beer tastings, uh, not reviews, right, Jesse? Not reviews, tastings. What's not going reviews. on, buddy? Oh, not much. Uh, looking forward to these beers. I've uh, I've had uh, quite a few bad beers recently. <laughs> not not bad, isn't they've gone bad? They just didn't reach a, a huge standard. Shitty beers, shitty beers. Shitty. That's what they're asking. Shitty fucking beers. It happens. All right. So um, run down how this works. I, I have people who have watched before, you know, but if you're watching this back on replay in the description box, I will have uh, timestamps to individual reviews plus the Kovi. Um, I also have links to these guys' individual channels. If you haven't checked out their channels, highly recommend doing so. Like I said, Nick, he's, I want to say an OG beer tuber, but he's been on beer tube for like nine years. So kind of OG. Uh, Craig, Eight. what's that, Nick? Eight. Eight, but eight, nine, whatever. Right? Yeah, anyway, yeah, whatever. yeah. And it's almost close to a thousand subs. He's like 120 short. Go, go help him out. Um, yeah, yeah. Big thumbs up. He wants to monetize, making that big beer tube money. Let's be honest. Uh, then we got Craig, one of my favorite, you know, beer reviewers. Period. But probably my favorite in the UK. Sorry, everyone else. Craig's the man. He's the new king of beer tube. So go check him out. Um, and then Jesse, if you like, like I said, home brewing, you want to uh, hear about New England beers. He's your man. So anyway, um, the rest of you that are watching live post comments i'll be reading them um i i have the ability to host and read my own comments it's i don't know it's a gift it really is it's uh, unbelievable but uh we'll read comments talent. it's yeah it's a talent that everybody has but uh mm -hmm. you know i'm gonna make a big deal about it but uh in the comment section right now we have todd from rajay's share uh, share beer show says cheers all what's up todd cheers buddy uh we have jake who says hey guys what's up jake and then we have Drunken One, says Cheers, gang. Cool. Cheerios. Yep. Uh, Todd says, Todd is a little bit combative towards you, Craig. He says, nobody gets a Rajay deal. No. Guess what, Todd? He, he kind of did. It's just he the way it is. He fucking kind of did. Uh, and then Jeff, a.k.a. No Jinx, says, Cheers, guys, and whomever. Yes, and whomever. Um, uh, Nick Nick has one. Nick has, uh, is it Boss Tweed, Nick, you have from Jeff? Yes, yeah, I've got Boss Tweed, uh, and I gave the, uh, the the M43 to Redbeard, and he actually said he did a review of it, and he'll have that up on his channel soon. So a little shout-out to Redbeard on the side here. It's yeah, so Jeff, job. we reviewed both of them at the Well and Piss Up. They should be on Chris's channel whenever he decides to edit them, but then they gave the extra cans of those guys. So, uh, yeah, they By were way, gross. Thank you very much for that. They were yeah, fucking shell turds. Come on. Uh, Todd says, yeah, he totally did overseas Rajay. LOL. Yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> so the first beer we will be reviewing is Chimay Premier, which is Chimay Red, also known as Chimay Red, I should say. It's a Belgian style double, 7% alcohol by volume, 19 IBUs. And here's where it gets a little bit interesting. So I have a 2018 vintage. The batch number on the back is 46. Yeah, 48. Um, Nick, what is what do you have exactly? What is your vintage? Do you have the big 
Cork and caged? You do. Okay. I have a big cork and caged bottle of the 2015 Chimay Premier. Nice. Okay. Craig, what do you have? Um, I've got the 2018 vintage of this one. Um, okay. About five years, I think, they give for shelf life for these yeah. ones. Anyway. I don't know about the cork and cage, but um, L3503 and then forward slash 2023. Yeah, one thing we figured out uh, the pre-show where we were just chatting is that it seems as though the European um, labeling is different. Like on um, Craig's bottle, it says 2019 in the quarters of the, in the corners of the label. Mine does not, and it also gives the Best Buy date on the back. That's, that's on the on the uh, the blue. It just says uh, brune or, or brune okay brown on the, okay so. Uh, the corner. Okay, so it's still different. Mine just says beer and, and L, and then my my blue doesn't. So anyway, um, Jesse, yeah. you also have the 2015 cork and caged. 2015. I don't know if I can get that on the screen there, but it does say 2015 on the. Uh, cork. Okay, yeah, yep. Uh, and something I noticed when Nick held his up, you were talking about the difference between the uh, European. My uh, Trappist symbol there is is white. His is blue, I believe. Oh, is it? Yours is the 25th. Your um, little yeah. stamp code on the back, what does it say? Is it uh, L15? It doesn't have a stamp it code. It have back. a little code on the back. Holy fuck, Chimay is just messing with Holy us. They're trolling fuck. us. This is bullshit. Well, mine's in French and English, so it could be a Canadian label. Yeah. Oh, wow. Now, mine is foaming up real nice. I didn't do Okay, stop. But I'll give it a nice pour here. Um, we're going to do a Kuvi with this and the blue later. So make sure you save a little bit. Holy shit, there's a lot. Of, this is crazy carbonated, of course. It, I wouldn't be. Shake it up too much? I didn't do anything, Nick. You always blame me with shaking shit up. I don't shake it up. Holy shit. You all right? Where the fuck did that go? What did you do? Where did, where did it go? I don't know. It's somewhere behind my computer. At least it didn't foam up on the uh, table. Holy crap. Ooh. All right, well, maybe we'll get someone else to show the beer since I poured it like a moron. Um yeah. All right. Look at you. You speak, Craig. Speak, uh, and you just you guys. You guys. Well, what I've got, I mean, it's a, just no, about a one finger, just off white hair. Nothing too kind of uh, you know tinted brown or anything like that. But it's it's kind of a. It looks quite dark on camera, but looking into the light from this side, it's it's more like kind of a dark kind of ruby. I'd say. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. More of a yeah dark ruby sort of mahogany sort of color um but yeah very dark beer all the same yeah i think yeah, general I, I, I think you're describing mine that's yeah, well, how mine yeah that's the thing i think i honestly i think jesse's is the only one that's showing up on camera is how it looks to me in real life right maybe maybe nick's a little bit maybe the glass the different type of glass maybe yeah it's a crystal but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i would say that the head for me is kind of like a light tan Yep. Maybe like an off-white eggshell white. Yeah, I agree. yeah. It it looks. I mean, it looks like a Belgian style double. I mean, uh, Belgian style doubles more or less are what the Belgian brown, basically, in, in a lot of respects. So that's what it is. Uh, looks like a brown ale, although maybe a little bit more mahogany looking. But let's get yeah, notes. Okay. Like yeah. Anybody feel free to chime in whenever. I'm getting a little bit of an apple note. Apples and with some berries. Yeah, like a red apple core, like a like more towards the core of a red apple for me. Like a bit of spicy, yeah. like almost like a spicy cinnamon. Yeah, spices are definitely definitely what you expect from pretty much any Belgian beer, right? Yeah, getting like a, a perfumey kind of um, candied sugar kind of note with some yeah. sort of dark plums, figs, that sort of thing. Honestly, it reminds me of like a not so sweet like candy candy apple type of. Yeah. Like if you took like a candy apple and then like maybe dust a little bit of cinnamon and just random spices on it, but not that sweet. Like, I mean, a candy apple dipped in caramel is just like crazy sweet. That's this doesn't, it smells sweet, but not, not that sweet. It's also a little bit like a, a dusty kind of a dusty mold, like yeasty aroma to it. So, so yeah, the one thing I would ask is uh, Jesse and, and Nick, since you have 2015 vintage is what do you guys get oxidation from it? Are you picking up a staleness, like a cardboard or anything that you would perceive to be from the age? Uh, I'm not picking up like a, a cardboard or anything like that. Um, to me, Apple can be an off an off note. That's why I, I did pick up on the app, but you guys are all picking it up too. So, well, yeah, yeah. it's not, it's not like green Apple. Like you get, um, I forgot the actual name for that. Like the, 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 
scientific name. I'm getting more of like a straight on red apple that I get a lot of times uh, with Belgian beers. I don't, yeah, I don't think that's off as much as it's just probably part of their fruity essence that they talk about in this beer. Yeah, I don't get anything really that strikes me as like a carbon, like an oxidized note, but there's, it almost feels like that, that apple is a little on the bright side, maybe like bordering on vinous. And so I'm, I'm, I hope there's nothing wrong with it. No, I, I think you're, you guys are I describing don't... it kind of similar to uh, what, what Craig and I, how about you, Craig? Are you getting anything, perceiving anything much different? No, I'm just, I'm getting more of the kind of, uh, there's a slight kind of that Belgian yeast component a little bit more. Maybe it's because it's fresher, I don't know. Um, but then they're also getting that apple core, I'd say more of an apple core yeah. kind of thing, sweetness. Yeah. But then lots of kind of lovely kind of dark, rich fruits going with that as well. Yeah, I'm getting like um, a decent amount of like caramel and toffee too, like a sweeter burnt sugar. I know you said like Belgian candy sugar, but I I would say more just like a more of a burnt sugar for me and like a little bit of like raisin datey thing going on too. Like like you said, dark fruits, maybe even like a touch of cherry. Almost like brulee-ish. Yeah, that's a good way. Yeah, that's a, that's a great descriptor. This is why he's here, folks. But uh, yeah, anyway, it smells pretty good. I mean, you guys want to get into it? Get into yeah. it. All right, cheers, boys. Cheers, sir. Or it's Nick's the fucking nerd taking a picture. Come on, Nick. What are you doing, buddy? Yep. It's fucking super smooth. Holy that shit, is that good? Yeah, it's that really good. Damn smooth. Honestly, though, I mean, it's two sips in, and I know it's going to open up on the palate. The nose for me screamed way more complex than what I'm actually tasting. Like the first thing I notice on the palate is the the uber smoothness of the the mouthfeel and just the body. It's like silky smooth on the palate. Silky smooth, but I think with the age it's getting a little bit muted. Some of the uh, spice character it might be a little dialed back in the age. See, I I, I get some of that that candy you note know, you guys are talking about in the aroma more <laughs> in the in the flavor. Wrong. Well, on the palate, it's sweet. On the palate, I think it's sweeter than the nose indicated. Um, but I, I will say this, Nick, like drinking it right now and having a relatively fresh bottle, like my bottle could be anywhere from like six months to a year and a half old. Um, Craig's is probably a little bit fresher, but it is muted. Like the spices even on the palate are muted. This is more about that like candied sugar, sweetness, caramel toffee, breadiness. And then just the epic smoothness to the mouth feel like I'm not getting a huge spice profile, which is weird because I could have remembered this being like decently spicy, like from the yeast, pro, you know, from the yeast profile. So I, I don't know. I'm okay, getting a little bit more alcohol now. Now I've had, a, you know, taken it in and then smelling it again. I'm getting a little bit more that kind of I, alcohol. I can't say I'm getting alcohol from this, but I'm still getting a reasonable amount of spices like like uh, like cinnamon and clove going on here. Yeah, they're there. You, but, you kind of just put it like a little bit in your mouth and then kind of inhale with, you know, through yeah. your mouth with, with it. That's where you'll pick up some of that alcohol I'm, note. Actually. I'm also getting like this yeah. earthy note around the tip of my tongue. This is a PG fucking show, Jesse. I don't know what you're Sorry, talking about. I, I don't know what. Show. <laughs> mm. this is a Sorry, guys. I, I like, <clears throat> I. I don't, if, based on what you guys are saying about the, the 2015 vintages, I don't think. Like the the three three years or so, three and a half years, whatever. I mean, you guys have fifteens, we basically have eighteens. Doesn't seem like it's making a huge difference in a negative way at all. I mean, when you age these beers, I know it changes. Sometimes it changes for the better. But what you guys are describing is kind of like what I'm picking up as as we speak. So like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's both good and kind of yeah. weird because I thought it'd be I don't want to say substantially different, but I thought there'd be a, a decent amount of difference. Is everybody getting like a, a lingering bitterness afterwards? No, see, I'm not. Now, this finishes to the sweeter side of things for me. Yeah, it's more sweet. And my court birthday, 2015 on it. So sweet. All right, let me read some comments here while we uh, continue to sip on this and contemplate what we're drinking. This is classy review. The fucking classy review. Um, Jeff, no jinx, says he looks forward to seeing the reviews. That makes one of you, Jeff, because those reviews are going to be terrible. We're all sloshed. Everyone forgot about the uh, Old Nation beers, and we drank them like, you know, Four fifths of the way through the share. I blame Nick mostly. Um, <laughs> Todd says, "Cheers to Jeff." Alex, the beer master, shows up and says, "What's up, Bumpy? And what's up, Joe? What's up, Alex? Bumpy, what's up, Alex? What do you have for dinner tonight?" Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. He's always he's fucking. What? That's the that's the question every single time. That's the question. 
Oh, Ryan from Beer by the Numbers shows up and says, give me that Chimay Blue. Great stuff. We're going to sell down, Ryan. We're going to get to it. But yeah, it is it is a great beer. Even before reviewing it, we've all had it. So you, you are right. Uh, Christoph420 shows up says, horses are sexy. And I want to clarify, he says, horses are sexy. <laughs> and I think he said that so it would sound like something else. Again, PG fucking channel here. What are you doing? Um, and he says, what's up, sons? What's up, Christoph? Uh, Jake says, everyone's looks are different. Yeah, I mean, it's we all have, obviously, different lighting, different cameras, different webcams. I mean, I think Bumpy's on his phone. And it's just like, yeah, everybody's looks different. Uh, but, I, like, I'd say the closest that it looks like in person for me was Bumpy's. It has, like, more of a mahogany, amber-looking color to me than anything. Well, looks um, she looks brown on camera. Yeah, yours looks like fucking like, doo-doo water. Like red-brown. Like, I was, it's actually brighter than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, for sure. That's why I think Jesse yeah. looks the most appropriate. It just, just looks right. Mm. I, I went high tech. I got my uh, my table lamp from my beer room and brought it outside with me. It's tinting it's everything right yellow. And shout out to Craig yeah. from like four years ago. What's up, Craig? Yeah. Um, <laughs> at 420, uh, Christoph says, looks like some Chimay's in her. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're drinking up some Chimay's, buddy. Uh, Jake, who's drinking along. By the way, shout out to Jake. He ended up going to pick both these up to drink along with us. So thank you, Jake. That's awesome. He says enjoy. He says he's enjoying this way more than he thought he would. And he also continues with this doesn't taste as boozy as I thought it would. Well, it's only seven percent, right? So hmm. I'm not. I mean, the only one here I think was getting a little bit of alcohol was Jesse, and he was also getting a slight bitterness. So that hmm. could be definitely age playing a role on his vintage as opposed to the you know, Nick's vintage and and the ones that uh, Greg and I are drinking. So I was, I was picking up a little bit. After the first couple of sips, it was just going through and then smelling it again, no, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah for, me, for me to get that alcohol, I had to, I had to like have oxygen yeah. going over the surface of the beer in my mouth. Yeah. I mean, if I'd have been like two or three yeah. beers in or something, and I had this, and I probably wouldn't pick it up at all. I can see what you guys are talking about a little bit there. It's a little bit there. I think I think we're kind of spoiled nowadays with all these crazy beers hiding the alcohol so well. So when you drink a seven percent beer and you're like, oh man, it's a little bit boozy. Yeah, that's how it used to be. Like, I, oh, I like just, not there's, 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 no, there's no burn though. You don't get like no. a burn in the chest. There's no burn. I I just feel like this is going down so smooth and easy. It's like drinking just a standard like Belgian red ale or something. Mm. Yeah, it's extremely so, easy. Sometimes I, I like to have that feel of a little bit of booze because. Just to remind you, it is actually a beer. It's not like an orange juice or it's not with a lot of these modern day beers, should I say. Yeah. They're scary in a lot of respects. And a lot of places in the States, especially in New York, they don't put their fucking ABV on the can or bottle and you're drinking it. And you're like, if you didn't know any better, you might get fucking drink two or three and be dead, basically. You know what I mean? You had no idea. It was 10%. So, you know, it's great times. Um, what else we have? Uh, Alex says he had rice and sausage, Bumpy. Rice and sausage. Nice. Redbeard so. shows up and says, "What be going down?" But he did not say people of the world. He just asked, "What be going down?" Uh, our watch count because you're here, Redbeard. No, I'm just kidding. I love you. Um, Foamy Head says, "Hey guys, cheers. What's up, Foamy?" And then uh, Jeff asks if uh, Redbeard drank the M43, and Redbeard says, "Yeah, I had it last night." Jeff said, "Is it good?" He said, "It's glorious. Not good, but glorious." And then Jay, uh, then um, <clears throat> Jake, of course, with the puns, because we all love puns. We're all old dad jokes, all the stuff. He says, this stuff is shamazing. Mm. Oh, I think we should stop ribbing Redbeard. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think we could go with shimmy shimmy may. Oh, I think it's time to get cracked. Yeah. All right. So I rate on my channel out of five. I know, Bumpy, you, you do your 50 point, but we're doing it out of five my channel. We can do the math. Just personal enjoyment, no fucking to style or anything. Just personal enjoyment. Out of five, we'll start with you, Nick. What do you what do you think on this one? Final thoughts, and then your rating. Um, I think as far as the flavor goes, like it, like certainly it's the flavor's a bit more dialed back than the nose implies. Um, I love that it's drinking uh, super smooth and super easy, but I just I wish it had maybe a bit more spice and a bit more malt character to it, and perhaps that's the fact it's four years old that it's mellowed off a little bit too much in my tastes still i love how well that aged and i love how uh how easy that is drinking so i'm gonna give it a four to five yep solid solid rate how about you craig um i don't know i think in the, over the last sort of say six months to a year i've had a fair few different belgian beers just trying to catch up just more than anything else. In the early 2000s, going through the 2000s, I used to drink a lot of Belgian beers. So it's kind of like 
re-establishing my palate, if you like, with, with this, with all what's going on in, in the modern brewing industry, I guess. Um, but this one is, it, it feels like it's, it's slightly lacking. Maybe it's what I've had fairly recently. Um, it's still a world-class beer, um, but maybe it's just this bottle. Um, I'm going to give it this a 3.75. So you're going to be a nick out of five, right? Yeah. Craig gave it a nick out of five, and Nick gave it, I don't know who yeah. out of five, but it was a nick out of five. All right, that's fair. That's fair. I can see that. How about you, Jesse? All right, so I had to do the the quickest uh, bumpy 50-point <laughs> inspection. Um, I came up with a 40 out of 50, so uh, that puts it into like an excellent range, which basically would be like kind of like an A-, minus, but it could be also like a B plus. So I could be anywhere from that 3.75 to 4 out of 5 range. Yeah. Well, so what's your final we'll, thoughts on it, too? Like, in terms we'll of call just, it 3.85. Yeah. 3.85. Um, yeah. yeah. My final thoughts on it? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I just think uh, what was the flavors and stuff, I, I wasn't picking up on, like, a, a huge amount. It was kind of just one to two dimensional. Um, so that was kind of disappointing, but it had a great mouthfeel. Yeah. Still has a great head retention everything like that it looks beautiful um the i think the the aromas on it were more pleasing than the flavor but it still was not bad i agree with you i agree with you um I, i'm probably going to be a little bit higher than all of you because i think the mouthfeel on this is fucking bonkers like this is amazing like the i to to, to drink this and just how sickly smooth in the best way possible this beer is i kind of forgot and i don't remember it being this smooth but like it's just it's a joy to drink like flavors aside it's a joy to drink um i do wish there was more complexity i know it's just a belgian double so you're not looking for 75 different characters and all kinds of cr crazy complexity i will uh, I, I think I, I agree with nick a little bit like i think it was a little bit muted in the spice i pretty much everybody i think they, i was hoping for more spice component from this beer like i was hoping for a little bit more spiciness whether it's cinnamon or you know clove or coriander whatever whatever you perceive right because usually comes from the belgian yeast I didn't get that. Uh, it's mostly malt forward, um, you know, bready, you know, caramel toffee. That red apple core really sticks out. I think we pretty much all picked that up, which I, I don't get. I don't remember getting that in this beer. Um, but like, I enjoy it. I, as far as flavors go, I'd give this a straight four out of five. I, I dig it. I'll bump it up a little bit to like a 4.1, 4.15 because that mouthfeel. I feel like I got to give props to it. Not that the ratings matter, but I think it deserves it. So uh, I think we're all pretty much in the same, you know, round three, seven, five to four ish. Uh, I don't think this is anything that's – I don't think it's going to blow the, anybody away at this point. I think there's better Belgian uh, doubles. But this is readily available. Like, you can pretty much get this almost anywhere in the world, right? I mean, like, you, it's expensive. Don't get me wrong. Price point, I think we all paid – a decent amount to grab this except for of course fucking greg because he got a raj deal so he doesn't count but normally you know he's probably paying you know for one bottle five to six pounds seven pounds i think you said right somewhere in that range so you're paying what we're pretty much paying over here in the states i don't know what you paid for nick what did, what did you, you remember what you paid for I, those I stuff correctly i paid like 10 bucks for that that's a fucking steal then. four years ago that's a Canadian price. That's like eight. That's like 750 american for uh, that yeah the dollar was closer to parity back then but still that's true that's true and, and Jesse, you know, him and I were talking. We remember this being quite a bit cheaper too. You know, going back five, ten yeah. years. Like, yeah, I used to, they used to have in our local local grocery stores uh, for like right around nine bucks a bottle, um, depending. I mean, it, it, it varied. The the higher the alcohol went, it went up a little bit in price. Yeah, I got both of these balls uh, for fifteen dollars. So yeah, because yeah. they because they store them for me, okay. so I had to pay, you know pay for that. Yeah, he means each, not not combined, right? Fifteen each. You paid for those. 15, 15 a piece, yes. Yeah, a piece. No, no, we didn't get no Rajay deals. Let's just slow, no slow your roll. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, they're imported. I mean, the, the, you're going to pay a premium, but like, it's tough. I paid $6 for this and I think 7 for the blue. So, you know, these are these are 11.2 ounce <laughs> bottles, too. You're getting gypped a little bit in that respect. So I think they're good if you take into consideration, you know, the, the price point stuff is probably a little bit less rating wise. But I think we all enjoyed it. Um, I'll read comments and then we will bust into the blue. Um, we have uh, Earth shows up. He says, I'm parched. Need to fix that. Yes, you do. Earth Earth's on the West Coast. Just got home from work. I'm sure he's going to make up for lost time by drinking all the beer. Literally all of it. Jake says he's giving it a solid 425. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, right behind you there, Jake. Like I said, about four one, four one five. It's pretty good. Ewart Teku Murray shows up and says, "Ah, yes." I don't even want to know what he's doing right now because that just sounds gross. Um, 
Chris off the 10th. What's up, Chris? He says, thought for sure Nick was going to give it a Nick, uh, Nick score. Har, har. Well, I think we all did, including Nick. He just gave it a four to be nice. Uh, Eric Gilbert shows up and says, cheers, fools. Who are you calling a fool? Eric Gilbert. Yeah, we are. We're all fools. Um, Jake says he will definitely buy this again. Well, I, I did tell him he could find it easily anywhere, and then he told me, he's like, you, you said he could get it at Wagman's, and he, then he couldn't find it. So I'm sorry, Jake. I really am. But I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, Ewart says, before LCBO orders were a thing, I special ordered a case of Bomber Reds to my local store. This was in the early 2000s, if I recall. Hot on the heels of a Unibrew. Uh, G-R-N-S? Unibrew what now? I think he just means Unibrew beers in general. Um, and then Eric Gilbert says, the triple is the way to go with Chimay Sons. I'm going to need you to settle down, Eric Gilbert. Uh, we're, you know, we're doing the fucking you know, blue and uh, red tonight. So, you know, that's how it goes. I'm going to put this tie to the side because... Uh, Assuming everybody saves some, we're going to be doing a Kuvi later. We're going to fucking do a terrible job. But uh, we're going to get into the blue here. So the uh, Chimay Grand Reserve, or known as the blue, is a Belgian strong dark. Uh, it comes in at 9% alcohol by volume, 35 IBUs. And again, we will go with the bottling date. I'll start first this time. Mine says L18346. So this is probably... Um, you know, one of the fresher ones, uh, probably late 2018, so probably six to eight months old. Uh, how about you, Jesse? What is your big uh, bomber there, date-wise? Well, um, when they corked this one, they were drunk. It is another 2015. I don't... Let's tilt this back. Make it easier. Uh, but it's all upside down. They, they corked it upside down. <laughs> They're effing with you. Uh, how about you, Craig? What is... Uh, what's your... <clears throat> The uh, well, the date on this would have, I assume, it was uh, bottled of February of this year. Okay. Um, that's oh. before twenty twenty four. So yeah, twenty nineteen. It's got that's what has it in that corner at the front, both corners. Yep, mine does not. If you look, mine has it just says beer and now does not have yeah. the date. So, so that's, that's, that's interesting. But um, yeah. All right. So yeah. He, so basically, I have the eighteen. Jesse has the fifteen. Craig, because he's special, has the 19 that he got at a discount. How about you, Nick? I've got, uh, well, mine says L15, just before date of, like, 2020s. I'm okay. assuming this is another uh, 2015 bottle, considering we got them around that time. So, All right, crack them open, give them a pour, see what we got going on. Open mine, trying to <laughs> hope it doesn't explode everywhere. That's, you know. That was big. It's a lot of smoke. Yeah, a lot of, oh, Joe, shout out to Joe D, all the smoke. Oh, look at that smoke, bro. No smoke. I love Joe D. He gets so into it. Shout out to Earth, who is a member of Joe D. Share Beer Show every Saturday night at, I believe, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Cheap plugs for everybody. Didn't foam over. That's a good sign. No, I, that's that was the worry for you guys. Like, yeah, is it going to? Is it going to blow up everywhere? And it seems as though you guys are good. So um, this definitely is darker <laughs> by a significant amount of to the red um probably not gonna show it's probably gonna look the same on camera but no it's definitely darker in person it has like this like deep dark cherry look to it in the middle with like mahogany almost slight amber tinges on the outside about a finger of a straight up tan colored head tons of carbonation looks really creamy how about you guys Fucking yeah, this, looks the, exact the head on this one actually looks it looks lighter to me just a That's little bit uh closer closer to like a like an off yellowish type head but yeah definitely a darker body yeah I'm definitely this, i'm getting this like tan brown kind of kind of looking head and a nice deep rich looking fig colored body like a fig date kind of yeah it's puree almost that's a good way to describe it Nick dropping gems. You know, he's been on YouTube beer two for eight years. This is what you expect. Oh, gee, bitches. That's right. Recognize. Uh, so, how about you? How about you, Craig? Yeah, yours looks just as dark as the last time you had it on camera. Yeah, it's, it's, this is actually, a, there's not so much like oh. brown. No, it's more of a darker kind of. Um, yeah, it's like a darker mahogany, if you like, cherry just hues coming through. But yeah, generally quite dark. It's a little bit. More intense. Um, it had a one finger just off white head, like you guys. Um, but yeah, I I will say too uh, the carbonation. Just like I don't have like the etching or anything, but the carbonation seems a little bit more than the red based on what I'm seeing in my glass. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. Open, I don't know if we can. In the bottle, it was 
I was like, here we go. And then it, it didn't, it just looked a bit of smoke. And... Yeah. yeah. I think you can kind of see that on my screen. Yeah, I can see it. Yep. All right, let's get a nose on it then. This is way harder to get a nose on this, believe it or not. Like, I'm... St huh. Got more muted. <laughs> it's muted. It's mute and muted. It's muted, but it has a richness that the red doesn't have. Like, it, for me, like, I just got, like, a last whiff of it. and just smelled, like, all kinds of caramels and just, like, just, like, sweet. Yeah. I'm getting Can very, very rich and spicy. I'm getting, like, this... Oh, yeah. Brown sugar and brown sugar, yes. Like figs and dates. And... Yeah, I was gonna go with the uh, yep. kind of a like, caramel, caramel with the, like, the dark darker fruits. Yep. Yeah, this so. this smells more rich and, and decadent and just sweet. And uh, like you said, the dark fruits there, um, like, Nick, like, like apple, definitely apple pie spices. You get the uh, like all spice and snifter broken, but oh, I'm not getting. Oh, I'm drinking it a real motherfucking teku, bitch. Yeah, well, no one drinks anything and attack you from fucking Belgium, okay? Settle down. Jesus. I'm, I've only got this ah. Duvel gloss, so. It's oh, yeah. It's what I get for getting too close. Yeah, yeah, that, good job. That's the awesome Taku. Fuck. <laughs> I will say this smells This smells more complex, more rich, more deep, yeah. but it's also more muted, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah, you really got to get down in it. Right? Yeah. Definitely it's not as... The aroma's not as strong and pungent as the one on the on the premiere, no. but it's it's definitely more rewarding once you get deep. deep and in. I will, and I will say that this has obviously been out of our fridges or out of our cellars or whatever longer than the red because we drank the red, you know, what twenty minutes ago. So this is warmed up even to a higher degree. So uh, it's kind of surprising that it's this muted. But yeah, yeah anyway, so that that complexity is almost if you can smell complex beer. Mm -hmm. I think I say this beer. Yeah. It's not, there's not one thing that's kind of like stepping up over the, over anything else. Cohesive. Shout out to Paul. He always likes when I say cohesive. Yeah. Definitely cohesive. Like red grape coke and well, remarkably complex. One level. All right. Well, I, I don't think we're going to get much more out of it. It smells pretty fucking good. So I'm getting a bit more red grape as it uh, as it matures a little. Is it vinous? No, it's not. Vinous. It's actually not like vinous in comparison to the red. But the, <laughs> anyway. Nick, Nick, settle down. Just settle down. Buddy. All right, let's get into it. Cheers. 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 Yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. Real good. No. Now you talk about alcohol. Definitely, yeah. definitely picking it up on this one. See, I'm not. That's really mm -hmm. weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I definitely am. Right in the back of the palate. I mean, it's not boozy, but I, I can tell this is a bigger beer. I'm just getting more body. It's oh, not, yeah. I'm, I'm, getting, not, it's just I'm getting the it. alcohol is not really coming through. I must have another taste. Here I'm not getting it like in the flavor. I'm getting it warming down the throat. Yeah, on the back of the palate. Like you can tell, you can like, as you finish it and it gives them the, into the back of the palate and like going down your cheek, like you can feel warming, but you can also just feel like in general too. Like I can just tell this is a bigger beer because of the flavors. Like, yeah. It's there, like the nose sets you up for something that you're not expecting. Like it was so muted, complex, yes, muted in the nose. But when you taste it, you're like, "Holy shit, where was that in the nose?" Like this punches you in the face with flavor, at least in my opinion. Mm. Oh yeah, flavor. -wise. First, first thing I noticed was um, I was getting kind of a, a bread note from the from the malt, yeah. like a like a darker, richer like a, bread, like a brown bread. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, th this now on the palate for me, this is definitely a little bit more spicy. I'm definitely getting. Like you were talking about in the nose, uh, Nick, about like just like apple pie spices, cinnamon, and uh, maybe a little bit of like clovey thing going on. Maybe mm. I don't know, all spice, just like just like it's spicy on my palate. Yeah, I'm getting that spicy. Well, yeah. going in with the warming, uh, like the boot, like the warming alcohol in the back of the throat, it really makes this gives this a real spicy finish. It's got more of a kick to it now. And I'm it, drinking it a bit more, with, almost yeah. like drinking the aroma. Yeah, it's, yeah, like you yeah. get, you get like, like as I mentioned, you get like the dark fruits, you get the, like the figs and dates, and you get like getting the red grape that you were talking about. I'm totally getting grape. the red grape now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. it's not I, I minus, but it's definitely like if you just bit into like a red grape and you're eating it, like I kind of get that on the back of the palate. I don't know if it's the age talking, but it's also incredibly mellow at the same time. But it's, and it's going down extremely smooth, even with that, yeah. that spicy finish. This is 
I think the the red is was a little bit more smooth mouthfeel wise for me, but this is smooth for what it is for the style and the percentage. I think it's impressive. Um, the body on this one's definitely like lower side of full body, higher side of medium, like approaching. It's not thick and syrupy, but it has a bigger oomph to the body. Like comparing this to the to the red is like night and day body wise. For sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, the bottle the red was a lot thinner. This is yeah. fattened up quite a bit. Like the red was like maybe medium body if you're if you're being generous. <laughs> like medium yeah. body maybe. It, like this is a dessert beer, whereas the red was more one you would have with food kind of thing. Right? Yeah, I'd say the red is a drinking beer. This isn't just an uh, like you said kind of like a dessert or kind of like just you're enjoying you're having one for the night, you want a nightcap. This would be this, perfect. This is a great session beer. Yeah, fucking yeah. Well, Craig, you tried that once a couple days ago and yeah, you don't you remember anything, so Session the hell out of it. That, that, that was stronger than this. Yeah, no, I know. I know. It, you, it's it's an amazing <laughs> session beer. <laughs> Fucking cr- I'm going to read comments because that's embarrassing right there. That's twice. Now, Jake said it first. Now you're reading. Like, come on now. Oh, Paul's here. So, oh, man, I'm way behind in comments. That's on me. I guess I can't do both at the same time, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Chris says, is there going to be an after chat? Uh, depends on Nick. Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking I'll do one. There you go. Let you do one, Joe. Nope, not doing one tonight. Cool. Soon, though. Uh, Todd says, this makes me want to pick one up. I haven't had Chimay in a while. Todd, you need to grab at least these two. Give them a go. This is the one yeah. for me, then. But... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, I think, and we'll get into the final thoughts in there, but I think we all are pretty much on the same page uh, as far as this compared to the red. But I going into it, I knew that most of us would enjoy the blue over the red because, I mean... Fucking, it's better beer for what we want, probably. You know, so um, Jake says, actually, Joe, upon a second visit there, they had it. I guess they were just out last time. Well, I'm, thank you for the apology. Thank you for the apology, Jake. That's right. Wegmans always has it. Um, Eric Gilbert says, no settling down, sons. Well, that's on you, Eric. Uh, Jake says, also had Mazagave in the mix in the sixth section. That kind of surprised me. So that's Founders' new, like, I think it's like a 10% tequila barrel aged beer that people are going nuts over. So to be in the mix of sixth section for 10.99, a six pack. Pretty impressive. Jesus. Yeah. Redbeard says, I'd be down for an after chat. All right, Redbeard, we'll keep that in mind, but I don't know if you're allowed on Nick's channel. We'll see. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. Nick allows a lot of people on his channel. Uh, Earth says, I enjoy the blue. It's been a while, though. I think that's pretty much the case for a lot of us. It's been a while. It really has. Uh, Jeff says, uh, Jeff says, uh, my friend recently found KBS and Backwoods Bastard in a mix of six at Kroger. Wow. Holy balls. Holy shit. That's to find KBS, which is like, you know, basically $20 plus a four pack. That's impressive. The ultimate four pack if you add like yeah. Sherburn County yeah. to it or something. Uh, Jake says, Joe sounds a bit jealous. I'm always jealous of everyone because they're all better than me. Remember that, Jake. Uh, Paul says, uh, cheers, brothers. I'm here for the cohesion. That's right. That's why I had to shout you out. Cohesion, cohesive. It's all the same. And it's always for you, Paul. It's Eric Gilbert says, this, this one is way better than the red. The red is shite. I'm going to need you to settle down, Eric Gilbert. As I already said once, the red is not shite. In comparison to this one, you might have a point, but we're not comparing it to this one. We're just saying, you know, standalone reviews. This is not a comparison review. Two different styles. Um, Jake also says the one does hit you. Uh, this one does hit you a little bit more than the red. Guess that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it's 2% bigger. It's a different style. It's, it's yeah, you're going to you kind of punch in the face. Drunk one says hi to Paul. Paul says hi back. Eric Gilbert says, Rookie Joe, there is no booze. Well, sorry, Eric Gilbert. I don't just, you know, drink fucking 40% whiskeys every single day for lunch. Okay? Settle down. Um, Paul says, not too bombastic. It's a little bit thin. Yeah. It is a little bit thin. Um, it is. But it's a 9% beer. Uh, Jake says, was not expecting red and blue to be so different. I mean, the comparison, I don't, I don't know what you guys would go for comparison. The... Yeah. Red is basically, like, just picture an American brown ale at 7%. That's kind of what that's kind of what like that beer is. And then this is kind of like an imperial stout. I mean, it's not imperial stout. I'm yeah. just talking like the differences between the two. Like there's definitely differences, big differences. This yeah, is look. like their, their Abbott style can comparison to like a double. Yeah. Look at the difference. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Uh, I think technically this is a, this is a classic. <laughs> as a Belgian strong dark. Yeah, this is a Belgian strong dark, but I'm just saying like, if you were to do like an American comparison, the red is a brown ale. And I don't know what you would like, maybe like an imperial, um, like red or imperial brown or like an imperial porter. Like the difference is like it, they're not similar in many ways. Like they're just not. I mean, the only thing similar about, about them is Chimay, Brudem. It's the brand. Yeah. It. 
super yeah. spicy. They're Belgian beers, but they're yeah, they're completely two different styles. Um, Paul says these are beers you'd pair with more beers. No, th- these. Well, yeah, I think I totally agree with that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, clearly, always, Paul. Uh, Eric Gilbert says, where's the triple? Well, we were trying to s- remain somewhat sober, uh, Eric. So maybe we'll do the triple and do they have it? I think they have the triple. And then what else is there? Is there anything else? Do they make like a, um, the white and a gold? Yeah. The white is what a Belgian vit beer. No, no, not the white. The, gold the, is. The, tri- the, the triple, the gold, the white's is the, the triple gold. and the gold is the, the, or maybe they just have a vit beer standalone. I remember seeing like four or five. Yes. Yeah, so the triple was the, yeah. um, triples, the white. Triples the white. The white. And then the gold is the green. Green? Is it green? I don't know. Fuck. It's I don't know. A, I don't know. Gold is. Yeah. yeah, the white is I don't even know. The, the white is the triple. That's the, the, the three like a single or something. It's only four point eight percent. Yeah, it's a, pat, yeah, pat, it's a vid yeah, beer, pat. isn't it? Pat beer? Yeah. Patter's beer. Patter's beer. So yeah, I mean the classics are the red, white, and blue, the Belgian strong dark, the red, and the triple. Those are what everybody can get for the most part. Um uh, Earth says he completely agrees with Paul, which you know that's not a shocker. Paul, Paul concession, everything, and so can Earth. Uh, oh, Kyle from No Hype shows up and says blue is good for sure. What's up, Kyle? Uh, by the way, cheap plug for Kyle and Rod. They're going to be doing a review at nine thirty of a uh, book. I forgot what book, Kyle. You can tell me, and I'll read it. Although people can just look at the fucking chat. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, Patrick O'Shaughnessy says, "What's going on, fellas? How was the beer time? What's up, Patrick? Uh, the beers are have been pretty good. I think we're enjoying them for the most part." Right, fellas? Yeah. Mm. Yes, I'm I'm back. Yeah, no, it was just we saw we were, I was reading comments. I saw you pop up. I was like, you'll be back. <laughs> I lost lost internet, so I'm on on the Y on on the uh yeah. Yeah. Um <laughs> I, I saw I saw listen, I'm a top, I'm a great host, except for I'm not. Uh Christoph Fortoy says, Yeah, super long uh, work phone call while watching beer homies. It's all right, Christoph. It's okay, man. Backwoods Billy Craft beer reviews, tons of emojis and says cheers, everyone. Cheers, Billy. Um, Jake, Jake has a, uh, oh my God, no, hang on, a little controversy here. Jake says both are great, but I think I like the red just a little bit more. Oh shit. Everybody's entitled to an opinion, no matter how stupid right. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Jack, Jake, you're not, your pal's not stupid. No, you know, uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no. And, that, and that's, that's cool to see Jake. And that's the great thing about, yeah. you know, everybody's palate or just like everybody's taste in general. You, you never know what you're going to like more. Uh, backwards Billy says expensive Belgian ale. Nice, but overrated in my opinion. I think, I think yeah, I think Chimay is a little bit overrated, and I not overrated per se, um, but I think if you compare them to a lot of the other Belgian beers that you can get in the same style, especially the blue, I think I, I'd rather have a Rochefort or Saint Bernardus over Chimay. Me personally, again, everybody's different. No, I totally agree with that. I'd rather have a, and, and you know what, Chimay was the like the best thing I could get for Belgian stuff for for a long time, and then I had Rochefort. <laughs> yeah, and then it, it's it's night and day. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is, um, and until you have those beers, I don't think you uh, like a lot of people can't make that comparison or or don't um, understand. Like Rochefort and Saint Bernard's beers are great. Like you know, Vest Lateran too. If you could actually get your hands on them, I'm sure they're up there, probably yes. over Chimay. But the thing about Chimay is you can get it everywhere. It's the availability of Chimay is kind of unbeaten when it comes to this style. My, yeah, my, for, my introduction to like Belgian beers was was before they went to ABM. That was um, Lefay's. Mm. Their face used to be the one generally we had it on tap down here early 2000s. Lefe or Fidigum. Yeah, Chemin Blanc. That that was kind of my wake up to Belgian beer styles. So, same here. Blonde in the in the brown were the two that the first two Belgian beers I ever had were those two. Um which by the way, might do that again if you, you guys wanna come back and can get uh the Lefe uh the brune and, and the blonde. I think that would be a kind of a fun a fun review uh, to revisit them. It's been probably like eight, nine years for me, honestly, <laughs> for those two. Like, it's been a long time. I can't get Brune, but I think I can oh. get Blonde. Yeah, I can get the Blonde. That's it. Unless I really looked. I never really looked, though. Do a little bit of work, Jesse. Just a little <laughs> bit, man. Not Sad, asking I much. actually had some Blonde uh, Brune, and I drank it all. Jesus, oh, Nick. God damn it. I bought it. Hey. Get yourself under control. Lee, Lee Russell shows up and says, wish I could still get Chimay Blue. Should have stocked up years ago. Well, that's crazy that Lee cannot get it. Yeah, well, he used to be able to get it. And actually, that's like the, my first experience with Chimay Blue was going to Nova Scotia and picking up a cork bottle like this there. You used to be able to get them for like 12 bucks. But even at that price, it was it was absolutely worth it because this beer is yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, it's, it's um, great. 
And this funny that Lee pipes up because like my first experiments was it was Stellaring were because of watching him and his channel and his experiment he, to raging this stuff. Which is still a good watch, by the way. Like if you want to see somebody yeah. age one, uh is it five straight years he did it? I think he or three. It was four. Four. Four straight yeah. years. But basically Lee drank one fresh and then he put down three more and drank them uh every single year around the same time. And it was cool to see that how they changed. I, I do remember watching that. That was that was probably like 2010 to 2014 something like that something 2011 like that, yeah that's good yeah that, that's what inspired me to start doing some salary on my own well yeah it's good times um say i'm but, og he's more og than me well he's the OG he's, yeah, he, he's the og 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 uh 2008 og, OG. and billy I, I said get, i can get tons of allagash stuff yeah, it would, so oh, can I. Maybe we'll do some. We'll do some. Yeah, Nick, if he did a little bit of trip, he could get some allagash. I could. Yeah, if I went over to Maine, to Maine, I probably could find some. Oh, maybe we'll do something later on this uh, year and try to maybe get maybe a, if we can talk uh, ahead of time, maybe get like the classic like allagash white and something else. And if you make a trip down, we can. Yeah, yeah. Out. Let me know. Like, if you can give me some names, I can look for them. I mean, yeah, we'll talk after. Out, it's like an app. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. We'll get it done. Um, we have uh, Backwards Billy says, Shimei is available here too much, overpriced. Yeah, I mean, they're expensive. That's just the, the name of the game. They're expensive. Belgian beers in the States specifically. Like, go up to Canada and go up to Ontario and just see the Belgian prices. It's just absurd to me. Like, it's like a third of the price they pay American for what we pay for stuff. And it's just, I don't want to say it's sickening because... No, it's yeah. sickening. It's fucking sickening. <laughs> I get angry. I go up there and I'm like, what the fuck, man? Well, we haven't talked about how much we paid per bottle of this, but I know that yeah, we're, we're, this we're, stuff, they were regular price, like five, six dollars a bottle. But I got a whole bunch of these when they went on clearance. Roger, uh, Roger deal. Yeah, I, yeah, it was totally a Roger deal. I think it only paid like two fifty each or something crazy like that. And I'm like, you're serious? All right. I bought like 12 of them. <laughs> you know, all at Jesus once. Christ. Dude, 12. And I, still, I still got like six more. Wow. So why do you think I got this sitting here? Again? They're great. Yeah. yeah, you think? Yeah, I'm glad I've done six more. It's more like five anyway. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's when you find a great beer and you can get a great price. Yeah, uh, especially something like this that can age. You could probably age this for fucking ever, honestly. Yeah. And, you know, you could break, you could boss, you could do a, a Lee like, uh, you know, every year crack, crack one open, just see how it changed. Yeah, exactly. Although I've had um, hit or miss results with the ones that are crowned because mm -hmm. the reason why I got two sitting here is because I've had oxidation issues where I've opened one of these and it seems I open it all of a sudden, there's foam all everywhere and it doesn't taste right. This one tastes beautiful. But I've had it before where it gets in either a little bit of infection or it'll get a oxidized. So it's, you got to be careful with the crowns. Yeah. The cork is better. You're yeah. Here. Well, yeah, I, for, yeah, for oxidation and, and preserving the beer for sure. Um, Kyle and uh, Rod will be reviewing This Ain't the Beer That You're Used To. Uh, he says, you got to go read the cliff notes before the book review. So, yeah, that's on Rod's channel at 930. Uh, Christoph says he's watch, chugging, watching Devastator. Mm. Uh, Eric says hi to him. Um, Kyle says, yes, Rochefort and St. Bernard's are better than Chimay. Okay, really leaving now. <laughs> no, I, I think that's a prevailing thought for anybody who's had those three, you know, anything from Rochefort and then St. Bernard's and these, I, I think Chimay is, I'm not going to say they're a distant third, but for me, they're a third. I mean, the, of the three, that's just kind of where, where the chips, where the chips fall land. Yep. Anyway, uh, Paul says, as long as your Belgian brews are aged by a raging furnace. I already made that joke, Paul, but uh, I appreciate you <laughs> making it again. <laughs> Jake says, you know what else is available everywhere? Bud Light, for fuck's sakes, Jake. You're right. It is. Uh, Ethan, from Ethan's Beer Review, shows up and says, cheers, guys. Wish I could join this chat. Well, Ethan, I wish I knew you were still alive, and I would have let you join <laughs> this chat. Um, no, Ethan, yeah, yeah, I had this planned uh, for weeks now. These these three guys, I, I did my last live show. I was like, if anybody wants to get the beer, get it. I didn't like seek anybody out, but all three of these guys were like, yeah, I can, I can join you. So here we are. That's right. Uh, back was Billy says, locally, Tall Tales Brewing Companies, Belgian Strong, uh, Belgian, Paul Bunyan, and Third Wave. Uh, he likes that. Plus, they they have a barrel aged uh, Belgian triple. Sounds good. Um, and then he talks about another Revelation Craft Brewing out of uh, another place in Delaware. Won a few wards for their Belgian Strong and Sours. Um, Ethan says, Joe looks like he's talking to a giant black robot penis. That's because I am. Clearly. I mean, what else is this? Fucking Ethan, what a weirdo. Uh, it, looks, it looks like a nice mic on a serious note. Is that what you think it is? Because the joke's on you. This is a giant black robot penis. 
Sorry, Ethan. Uh, he says he most likely I'm just a typical hater. Ethan, no, nobody, you don't hate on anybody. Like I said, I didn't even know you were still alive. Um, Christoph says, I think it's the Wesley Snipes ASMR kit. Okay, we're done here. So uh, <laughs> we'll go with uh, final thoughts. We'll start with Jesse. Final thoughts and rating out of five, or you can do your 50 point and then convert it like you did last time. That's cool. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, my final kind of thoughts on it. Uh, it does have a, a deeper note. You can kind of pick up more of the malt flavors and stuff. I do kind of like beers that you can taste some some more malt flavors in it. Uh, and so overall, it's, it's going to get a little bit of a, a jump up in score from the, the red. 43 out of 50. So we can put that at like Almost anywhere from the 4 point, say 4.1 to like 4.25 range on the five point scale. I think that's kind of where that would land it. Nice. All right. So we'll just go with like a close to four, two, five. That's fair. And you get in, to be fair, you give the, uh, red a three, eight, five. So that's just, you know, almost a half point. And, chunk. and to also be fair, I don't, I don't really care for doubles or quads or anything like that. I'm more of the, the, uh, you know, the, the singles in the, uh, the, uh, trapels there. Okay. So you like the lighter Belgian yeah. styles as opposed to the darker ones. Okay. That's fair. Um, how about you, Craig? Um, yeah, this has got considerably more kind of body going on with this one and more complexity. Um, as I say, it's just very smooth. There's no one kind of flavor overlapping the other, like, as in like being a dominant kind of force. Um, it's a very well-rounded beer. There's a nice sweetness about it. There's still a little bit of alcohol coming through, which I think you're going to get that a little bit to some mm -hmm. degree. Um, I don't know about the older vintages, mine, but certainly the fresher bottle, this is February of this year. Um, expect that a little bit when it's a little bit closer to, to the you know, the drinking date, I guess, of, of being packaged. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just one of them classic Belgian beers that I, I think he, he, it's, it's kind of got to go and get Along, along with the Rush Force and, and and the various others that are the prominent force in the Belgian brewing um, history, basically. But but yeah, this is. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just my palate's changing. But I think I've, I have reviewed this at some point years ago, and I've had it quite a few times, sort of after that and before it. Maybe I don't know. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a really good, it's a world class beer, but I still, I'm still going to give it a, a 4.25. Um, I think that's where I am with this. Um, I've, I've had beers in the, in this Belgian dark. Is it? Yeah, Belgian, Belgian, Belgian strong beer. Yeah, yeah um, that's a little bit above this, um, but yeah, this is fresh and it's it's pretty damn good. What it is. Yeah. And I agree with you. I, I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Rochefort 8 is a strong dark as well. And, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, and I think that right. I yeah. think that destroys this one. Like, See, destroys yeah. it for me. Like, that's yeah, like a 4, true. 7, five, 5 out of 5 for me. And this one doesn't doesn't really live up to that. Um, so I'm, I'm right there with you. But uh, how about you, Nick? Um, final thoughts, rating? I don't know. I, I, I find it, despite it being a little muted in the aroma, it still brings a lot to the table. The aroma is very satisfying. The body is remarkably complex and so smooth and easy to drink with a nice, satisfying, spicy finish. And uh, very, very, very complex. I still find that even, maybe there's a better one out there, but I still find that this is the benchmark for Belgian strong dark ales. Like when I think of a Belgian strong dark ale, the first one that comes to mind is Chimay Blue. Oh. Um, and to me, as I was the first time I, time I tried this, I still love this beer. Um, I'm going to give it a four and a half. I really like it. I like how you're like almost apologizing for it. Like, that's I'm not, sorry. It's just my opinion. No, I, 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 that's a fair, that's more than a fair score. Like I, I'm, I'm not actually that far off. Uh, I, I agree. I, I think it's like, like when I said Rochefort destroys it, like I keep in mind that yeah. Rochefort eight for me, not 10, like eight is my favorite Belgian beer probably of all time. Personally, I like it more than 10. I like it more than a lot of Belgian beers. Like me personally, that's just a personal opinion. Obviously like this all is right. 
But this is this is damn good. Like I cannot sit here and fault it too much. Um, I do wish. I don't know. I just wish there. This is. This seems like something's missing a little bit for this one. Um, I, I you know we talked about all the different characters and everything. I just it kind of falls a little bit flat as far as like a just a world class amazing Belgian strong dark goes for me. But it's still damn tasty. Like I can't sit here and say that this isn't a tasty beer because it fucking is. I I'm thoroughly enjoying it. This is better than the red, although you, it's not a comparison again because they're two different styles. But like. If you're talking about personal enjoyment, yeah, this is better than the red for me. Um, is it significantly better? It's 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 somewhat better. Uh, I would probably go like in between a three point two five and a three point five, or sorry, four point two five, four point five, like four point three five, four point four, somewhere in that range. Um, it's really good. I the only issue I have with it, like all Chimay beers and all Belgian beers for the most part in the states, is that it's expensive. Uh, you know, people like to shit on new and sell IPAs nowadays and all these crazy beers that come in 16 ounce cans that are $5 a can. Well, this is a great beer, but this is also $7 for 11.2 fluid ounce bottle. Is there value there? If you love this beer? Yeah. It's, it's an eye of the beholder for me. I haven't bought this beer in like four years. Why? It's fucking expensive and where, it's just where, not worth it for me. Where would you put, um, say the same style from an American brewery that you tried with against this i'd say the best belgian american brewery i've had to date has been allagash and i know jesse and, and even nick to a uh, lesser extent could speak on that ad. but even like allagash stuff i a lot of it's just not as good as like chimay if like i had a belgian strong from allagash probably really good probably not as good as this though like it's yeah. tough for american breweries to replicate belgian beers it just is in my opinion like from what i've had um I can't think off the top of my head. But I, I can't even think. Allagash definitely has a strong dark. I just can't think of the name of it, or if it's even like just a regular, you know, oh, year-round. Yeah, uh, it's cold. I haven't had Allagash in years. But what do, what do you think of Spencer's? Because they're out of Massachusetts I, and they're yeah, actually at the right now. So. We don't. I don't get Spencer's in Western New York. Uh, I've been wanting to try them for a while, but I don't. I don't get any of their stuff. I had their trumpets um, in Portugal earlier in the year. Oh, that's cool. I can't get a fucking New York, but you can get it totally in Portugal. No big deal. You know, distribution's <laughs> fantastic. It, it was a bit. It was a. I didn't get a rod deal though. So. No, Spencer's one of the New York Trappists, though, right? Like, so it's in is it Massachusetts. Yeah, Massachusetts. Yep. Yeah. 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 I had one get, from Spencer's yeah. like years ago at Chad's place. Mm -hmm. What? You get them online. What's that, Craig? So, Go ahead. Yeah, I'm online. Yeah. All right. Fuck you, Craig. We're done. Um, yeah, so I mean, clearly, clearly, we, I think the general consensus is the blue we enjoy more than the red. I do think that's not really a spoiler because I think going into this, we pretty much we're all going to enjoy the blue more than the red just because that's, it has more flavor. It's a, it's a better beer. Yeah. I don't think there's, I, everybody has a different opinion. Clearly, Jake, I think Jake said he gave it a four of uh, the blue and he likes the red more, but I think in general, I think a general consensus would be the blue is better than the red, but you do have the outlier like like Jake Jake that says, "Hey, I like I like the blue." Or, I mean, I like the red, which is nothing wrong with it. I wouldn't say that anybody who likes the red more than the blue isn't wrong so much. No, it's your opinion. You, you know, can't. Yeah, and, and they got they got different they got different flavors too. Yeah, and it's they're different styles. It's you can't I, I, to, to compare them head to head is unfair to both beers. Well, one thing I do find is I find myself drinking the blue a whole lot slower than I do with the with the red because the red yes is, that's you know, so gotta much savor more. the flavor, baby. Yeah, I think it's the alcohol. I think kind of slows you down too, because you do notice it a little bit more. You do. It, and then you're thicker, it is a little bit bigger. Going back to that whole thing about dessert beer versus a drinking beer, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and it's just it's, yeah, it's just richer. It has richer flavors. So yeah. like you picture yourself eat. I mean, there are desserts where you could eat you know a ton of it, and then there are desserts where you have a single slice of like a really rich decadent cake, and you're sitting there like like one bite every five minutes. Cause you're like, I, you know, I can't just eat this entire slice instantly. It's just yeah, you like know. Coca-Cola versus Gatorade kind of thing. Right? Yeah. 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 They're both yeah. probably the same amount of calories or very, you know, just like in terms of sugar and stuff, but you could pound out Gatorades and Coca-Cola. You're not pounding. I mean, you might pound it out. Who knows? Maybe they're really like, <laughs> if we carbonate Gatorade would it, you know? Yeah, that's right. Carbonation. <laughs> um, Back with Billy says, my mic is nice. It has a clean, a great, clean, clear sound. Yeah, everyone needs to hear this beautiful voice. So clean. Yeah. So clear. Blue shut, up, shut up, Craig. Um, <laughs> Christoph <laughs> says, yes, it does. Quality matters. Jake did say he's going to give it a four. Eric Gilbert says, what a crime. Uh, he says, really, Shamay is solid. Arc, 
And then he says across the board, sons. I think he's already into the whiskey and failing at everything, including grammar. Uh, Billy, now this is so I've had this discussion before, and Jesse, you can chime in here. Uh, Billy says that he personally rates beers in accordance with the BJCP style. Uh, this is an IPA to IPA, Belgian to Belgian, etc. He rates within the style guidelines. Does it uh, does it meet it? Does it stand out? And yeah, I, I, I mentioned this before. Like as far as like reviews go, I always like I, I the BJCP totally has a time and a place and you know it's great for brewers it's great for home brewers too like jesse you can speak to this as well like you know homebrew competitions and stuff uh, i have no issue with people who you know rate to bjcp certifications and guidelines sure uh my channel though me i rate to my own taste i don't do it to style uh just because that's that's why I, I just i try to tell you what i think about the beer to my own palate as opposed to what the style says but i don't think it's wrong to do that but i also don't think it's wrong to do you do it however you want like it's it's you know it's it's whoever's channel is whoever's channel right like some people do it to some people do it out of five some people do it out of ten some people do it out of 100 point scale some people the bjcp some people do it to other you know different guidelines it's like you know it's it's to each their own right so i, I don't have any issue with anybody doing it whatever way like i watch a bunch of different beer tubers that rate their beers a, a bunch of different ways for me personally i like to try to tell you guys how i feel about a beer personally uh, my palate not how it compares to style not like I said that there's anything wrong with that. That's just my own personal uh, way to to rate and review. But Jesse, that, you're, you do that. That was the, that was the way I had to kind of mess with mine because I I wanted to kind of, I, I took like the BJCP scoring guideline, mm -hmm. but then when you're going with beers that are basically brewed exactly to style, because this was pretty much set up for judging home brews to compare like yeah. how closely to the style. Yeah. So really, it's like a fifty fifty of. Okay, I gotta keep the style in mind, but also it's my own opinion. I have to throw in there, otherwise everything's gonna be scored super high. So things do get scored kind of low on um, on my channel sometimes. Yeah, and I always mention like on my on my channel, I'll do it probably every other review is like when I'm reviewing a beer, um, I'll say stylistically like it would get this out of this like if I was rating it to style. Like I try to do that. So and I usually do that when I either score a beer too high or too low based on my own personal preference if i give it like a beer 4.75 that i know the general consensus might be like it's a four out of five i'll say that's because that's my personal preference stylistically it might be more in this range or whatever you know but um yeah no i the bjcp is great for again homebrewing and then like the comp like you know like the the great american beer fest i think pretty much pretty sure they use that for like you know to figure out the wards and stuff so i have nothing no nothing wrong with it i just don't do it personally on my channel um but i know a lot of people do I've just checked this the last time I had it the last few times, and I gave this a five out of five. And this was like, you fucking liar. Yeah, two two yeah. years ago or so. Yeah, yeah your pellet shot. Well, it just shows your pellet change, or maybe this bottle, yeah, or a lot of. It's not the beer. It's, I mean, this is just the world class beer, but obviously, mm -hmm. um, I think it's just like you say, it's just changed. I've, I've been, I've tried a few more sort of Belgian beers and stuff since then, and. Other strong beers, maybe Imperial Stouts, have probably got a bit more to do with it. I've got more intolerance of, of them bigger ABV kind of beers, and I think that may have something to do with wh where I am with these beers now, um, yeah. which is quite interesting. I, you know, feel we're all that in, and but it's not the bit. Uh, a beer like this is very, very consistent. Or well, these two beers are very consistent. They're across yeah. the board. Uh, they don't change. They're no. Oh. It's, it's, it's like someone drinking a Bud Light now and like it. And again, I'm not comparing this to Bud Light from that, but I'm just saying in terms of like the, the consistency, it's like drinking a Bud Light 10 years ago. And now it's the same fucking beer. If you don't like it as much as you did, or you like it more, it's probably your palate more than anything. Yeah. That's just what it comes down to. So, um, so uh, you heard it here first. Craig gave it a super low score tonight. Uh, why? Uh, cause he hates Chimay, I think. Is that right? I hate them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll never buy it again. It costs too never. much money. Never. Um, close the trap. Yeah, it hates all the traps. <laughs> all the traps, every single one, even the new one, Spencer. Fuck them. Um, Christoph says California gas beer prices. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. This is kind of California uh, gas beer prices. Um, Eric Gilbert says it's like seven dollars for a liter uh, for Chimay in Ontario. Totally rubbing it in and get Spencer's too. Ha ha. Fuck you, Eric. Okay, man. Bullshit. All right, I'm good. As for beer, Billy says, as for beer in general, import beer, especially Mexican, German as well, and light beers are gaining. However, beer is uh, headed down as as I seen an accelerated move have down after the fall. Did I miss something? I might have missed something. Uh, Jake says, my palate is also shit, so my word should not be taken as gospel. Me too. My, my palate is also. We're all, all of our palates are shit. 
I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, our palates are our palates. That's why if you watch beer reviews or you see people on Untapped or on Beer Advocate or whatever, that's their own personal opinion. Like, I it's, their, yeah. I yeah. well. it's, like, it's just like taste in music, taste in movies, taste in you know TV shows or food. It's it's personal opinion. Like somebody can sit yeah. here and say, I love olives. And then you get a guy who says, I fucking hate olives. It's like, who's wrong? Just, Nobody. Just go, 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 and, go and check out, see if you like it. That's, that's the model. Go for it. Yeah, if you've never oh, had these beers, go buy them. There's no reason not to, except for maybe the price <laughs> in some places. But yeah, you gather opinion of them, but then it doesn't. It's not going to be as good as your own your own opinion. And no That's two, the right one. No two people have the same opinions. There are beer tubers I'll watch that probably have a similar palate to me, maybe 80 percent of the time. But that means two or three times out of ten, we don't match up on our palates. So. Yeah. You can't believe what everybody says and take it for granted. I mean, I've seen people like comment in YouTube sections be like, yo, your palate's always spot on 100%. I'm like, that's bullshit because it's not. There's at least one or two beers out of those 100 that you just watch his reviews that you don't sync up with. There has to There's be. There's no perfect palate. No. And there's no perfectly matched palate. I've, I've never met someone where I agree on a beer 100% of the time with them. Just doesn't work. Because that's and, just and not I, I, run in, I run into the issue too, which hopefully this happens to you. The other folks, uh, where you're drinking something or you're smelling it and it smells like, like it might smell like a fruit, but you don't know what it's just like, it's got a fruity aroma, but I don't know what it is because I haven't come across everything out there. Like Joe uses lychee. I've never had that. Lychee, before. Dude. Oh, dude, I didn't have a lychee, lychee till a couple of years ago. I fucking, I heard people say lychee and I'm like, I've never seen one. And then I ate one and I was like, wow, this is fucking delicious. So yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a lot, there's like, Honestly, I can honestly say I've never I've never used dragon fruit as a fucking tasting note in my reviews because I've never had a dragon fruit. I have no idea what the fuck it tastes like. I, I, I don't. It, they, they're, but so, not, they're so dull in flavor. You really have to like concentrate. Yeah. But sometimes I can get dragon fruit out of some beers. But, but it's like it's like a, a papaya is another one where like I've had papayas before. Papayas to me don't have a disti- like a huge flavor. It's all about the creaminess of the actual papaya, like the the the, the fucking the mouthfeel of the papaya. That's all so fucking pretentious and stupid. But you know what I mean. Um, it's about yeah. the creaminess and like the texture of it. It's not so much the flavor of a papaya for me. So like I don't get papaya in a lot of fucking you know beers because like I'm all, I'm thinking about like the texture of it as opposed to the taste, just how it is. Um. Anyway, read the rest of these comments and then we'll uh we're gonna coovy the shit out of these two. Fucking right we are. Assuming people so, have it. So we're gonna we're gonna lower the ABV on the uh Grand Reserve then, right? When you coovy yeah. with a lower percentage. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be eight percent by the end of it. Uh <laughs> Jeff says peace out guys, three fifteen AM comes around quick till next week. Take it easy, Jeff. Have a good one. Um Chris says off the town, just feel more citra than all citra. Oh my god, yeah. I gave him a can of uh other half more citra than all citra, and uh, I knew he'd like it. He probably did. Eric Gilbert says, cooking, drinking, wisers, and pills near Urkel. So totally correct on the hammered comment, Joe. Sons! That's right, Eric. You know why? If I always call you hammered, that's because you always are hammered. Let's just be honest. Um, Christoph says, never forget, Eric. Horses are sexy. Whores are sexy. Oh, wait. He said whores. Horses? Whores. I don't know. <laughs> I'm confused. Chris uh, Redbeard says, god damn you, Ed, off the 10th. He's uh, very upset that Chris got another other half beer. Um, Eric Gilbert says, not a fan of horse dick, just whole son. Jesus Christ. Uh, Jake says, Shemay, why do I read all these comments? Because this is a PG-13 channel. Uh, Jake says, Shemay Purple, let's do it. Christoph says, just search it. Robot Chicken Centaur. Oh, oh my God. All right, so we're going to... It's just it's, it's all... All right, let's do a proper Kuvi. 50-50, boys. Right. Yeah, I'm, still, I'm still getting the bitterness off the red on mine. It's crazy. Here we go. Oh, oh, the all right, that's perfect, actually. I'm going to pour the red into the with the blue there's no there's no right or wrong way to coovy you just have to coovy and you make it pur- purple and yeah it's not fucking coovy it's fucking coovy you gotta coovy it boys and girl this is there supposed to be smoke coming out of my glass and it's warming up this looks like mud what the hell coovy look at that <laughs> oh, weird looking all right it so. looks like an oxidized IPA <laughs> looks like an oxidized an oxidized English IPA. Is that what that is? Yeah. <laughs> it's like uh like real brewed like iced tea or something. Like iced tea? Like a thick, like a nice steeped iced tea. So like something with like a, a lot of pithy lemon added to it or something. This what the fuck are you even talking about, Nick, right now? Are you hammered, buddy? Yep. 
All right, cool. Me too. Jesus, you see the amount of beer we've been drinking today? Yeah, no, we're doing we're doing all right. Um, so yeah, that that actually looks closer to the Chimay uh, Grand Reserve, the blue. I would say. Boozy. <laughs> Does it smell boozy? Cool. I'm I'm gonna say this. It it does not. Uh... It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't deduct any boozingness from it. I think it actually. Uh, oh, I think it, it smells great, though. Holy shit! What are you talking? about? <laughs> I feel like it's. It gets the, the aroma oh, brighter, though. Like, uh, like the, the the aroma of the sh the premiere is carrying over, but it's got the uh, the look of the premier the Grand Reserve. I'll say the nose is the best. Is better than both of them combined. Yeah. Maybe not combined. But definitely better than both of them. Like a, like a dusty red apple, almost. Yeah, definitely the red apple core. I'm getting spices, tons dusty, of sweetness. Dusty red candy apple. It's getting loads of booze. Lots Holy of shit, it smells fucking good. It smells great lots to me. I want to drink lots, lots of spice. All right, so 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 so, what is the general consensus on the nose? It's boozy. It's boozy pepper. smells. I'm getting more white pepper. I'm not really getting any booze. White pepper. I can see that. Well, I I I, 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 I had to pepper. get less in my glass. So I took a big chug and. Uh, yeah, I only had a little bit of it. Just you cheat. You uh, fucking guys cheat. You, you can... This is you're never you're not welcome back. No one cheats on the coffee. <laughs> no one cheats on the coffee. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be like scientifically 50-50, right? Yeah. yeah. Cold yeah. Cold yeah. Cold it has to be two part, like two parts to two parts, you know. Yeah, I had I had two I had I had two half full glasses and they made one very full glass. Yeah, so. Justin's gonna be hammered momentarily. No big deal. Here we go. All right, let's get into it. it. Smells. Some say boozy. Some say great. Whatever. Let's see what it tastes like. Cheers. That's pretty oh. fucking good. Oh man, that's really fucking good. Holy shit. Wow. That's creamy almost. You, you creamy. I think it got the mouthfeel from the red, but when more flavor from just the flavors from the the, the blue. Yeah, That's I'm getting a lot, a lot of kind of um, juicy kind of grape. Rather yeah, than red grape, yeah, it, red it, grape, it, all grape, day. The grape and the figs are almost coming off as juicy, and yeah, it's juicy. almost really it almost like opens up the uh, the spicy character you get coming out in the back of the throat. Yeah. This is why well, I'm goes. getting I'm getting the grape you guys are talking about before now with the mixture. Maybe, of red, maybe a lot of red currant, maybe. Mm -hmm. I can see that. I I'm, I'd say more red, yeah, more grapey. Bit Not more vine. dragon fruit. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, all the fucking dragon fruit that I've never had before. Also, this is why you always fucking coovy, like at all times, because you never know. And this is pretty good. That's damn good. I think this is better than the red, personally, for That's me. That's a pretty tasty coovy. Not bad. Yeah, I think it, for me, I get the mouthfeel of the red, more of the, the the flavor components from from the blue, but I think I want to say, yeah, it's more red grape, more dark. I think I get more dark fruits in this kuvi than either of the beers standalone is the thing. I think a little bit of that yeah, caramel. I, I think yeah, I may back. have I may it have turned, done it wrong. It, it really turned like Chimay Grand Reserve into a chugger. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, that might be one of the dumbest but greatest things you've ever said in your life. <laughs> for me, for me, my my kuvi is kind of uh, it's kind of taken out some of that malt that that darker bready malt flavor. Oh, it has. Out of reserve. It has. Yeah, and uh, I think that's where the booziness is actually now picked up more for me because now it doesn't have something to hide behind as much. I could, I could, it's, you know what? I would say this. This is this is for. I, and again, this is my palate, but it, this seems very dry. The Kuvi, yeah, more so than the rest. Like I never picked up the dryness. Both of those beers were, you know, relatively sweet. Like my palate is devoid of all the saliva. Like I've done on my palate. I'd say if the, it's probably the closest you'll get to a brute Belgian IPA, maybe, but with a lot of dark red fruits. Yeah, dark red, red grape, dark cherry. Like you said, yeah. red currant. Um, yeah, black currant maybe. Yeah, more black currant maybe than red currant. I I can't ever say I had a red currant. I had black currant before, not red, red though. Yeah, but yeah, I'm just more strawberry, but it's got that kind of almost like a bit of a bordering blueberry. Yeah, yeah. Let's just name all the fucking fruits: blueberry, blackberry, blueberry. strawberry, raspberry, Everything. fucking cherries, blackberry, dates, blueberry, fix. strawberry, raspberry, poison berry, dragon fruit, papaya, blueberry. fucking pineapple, dragon whatever. Fruit berry, light <laughs> fruit. summer fruits. Yeah, yeah, summer, summer, fruit. fruit. summer fruits. We're just going with summer fruits. Oh, oh, oh wait, I get I get the oh, seed yeah. the seed from the cucumbers. Oh, from the cucumbers, yes. No seedy <laughs> seedy cucumbers. It has a very refreshing. It's like the refreshing rind on the fucking the rind and the fucking raspberry or some shit. I don't care. We just made a we just made a salad. 
I want to say I'm getting tomatoes. Drinking the fuck, fucking fruit salad, bitch. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm about to go get the uh, the Italian dressing out of the fridge and mix yeah, it in. Yeah, too. just pour it in here. <laughs> Maybe some maple syrup, like you guys reviewed at the shit bucket matter. No, we just cuvie <laughs> two strong beers together. I would say the cuvie for me, like I, we're not, it's not, I, I always rate it, but like I would put it at like a straight four out of five. I think it's better than the red for me, but not that's as good right. as the blue. That's where I'm at as well. I think Jesse's the only one that's probably that likes yeah, it less I mean, than. Yeah, because I'm I'm not much on like I don't heart uh, I don't heart. Jesus. You don't heart. <laughs> <laughs> <is> the emojis. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't like like hard hard alcohol like hard liquors and stuff like that really. So where I'm picking up more of the booze flavor with the Kuvi, it's kind of it's deducting a bit for me there. So would you give it out of five? Just just for shits and giggles. I'd be curious. I, you I think this, gonna, gonna, this is probably going to knock it right back down to like a. Probably a 3.75. Oh, and Nick out of five. That's that's appropriate. That's appropriate. Yeah. How about you, Nick? What'd you give it out of five? Because you know, um, everybody who comes for the Koovies <laughs> on my channel. Everyone's here for the Koovies, nothing else. Yeah, I don't think I've ever really done a Koovie on your channel before, but that, no. that's that's weird that it just sort of it's almost like adding water to whiskey or something where it's unlocked all the uh, the extra flavors that you could get out of something like this. I it just opened the, the Grand Reserve right up and you get all the complexity, but it's so easy to drink. Um, I do find it a little on the mellow side. I don't think I really like it as much as just a straight blue by itself. But at the same time, that's that's opened it up to like maybe like a four point one and a five. Oh, that's right. Go between yeah, the, yeah, high four. Yeah, between the lines. It's a high four. Better than the red. It's a red beard four when he goes outside with Ashley. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll, we'll we'll read the comments and then finish up. Plug everyone can plug the channel and uh, definitely a full for me. If okay, so if you guys, oh, so you say four as well. Okay, um, if anybody has any ideas on what to review next week, I really didn't think about anything. Um, we need to plan this in advance when I have people show up. You know, I've been doing the solo review, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll talk about it off camera, and whatnot. But if anybody has any uh, suggestions for something that we could all get. Um, I'm, you know, I'm down to doing more duo and trio reviews as long as other people are, are quince, quadruple reviews. It's good times. Uh, you're playing off one another and just see how other people. I mean, this was good because we can all get it. Like I said, the Lefe, it's crazy. You guys can't get the the brune. Like that's insane to me that you can just get the blonde and not the brune. Like that's like wherever I see them, they're always right next to one another. So it's like for me, it's hard to process. I could go to the really expensive craft beer store that we have in New Hampshire and see what they have in their shelves, but they like you know like five bucks per bottle of something you can get for yeah. a couple bucks elsewhere. So Fuck price gougers, motherfuckers. But if anybody has any um, suggestions, whether here or in the comments, feel free to email me or just post on a, a video or even in this one and just let me know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm game for anything, really. I had a thought of doing... Um, I can't find them fresh. I wanted to do the New England style Palel and the New England style IP from Sam Adams at some point, but I want to find them like before their best buy date, and I could not single cans and I'm not I buying six packs of them. So. I can get to doing a style IPA here from Sam Adams. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, but anyway, read the comments and then we'll go into plugs and everything. And then uh quick plug already. We're going to be on Nick's channel after this, I think. Right, Nick? I think so. All right. So go over to Maxwell Cyrus sub to him if you haven't. Go over to Maxwell Cyrus beer reviews. Holy fuck. Don't ever say it like that again. Uh Earth says the Colvey Eric Gilbert says, Kovi. Yes, Kovi's. Uh, Jake says, this will be my first Kovi. And then he goes on with the head on mine is huge. I'm going to need you to settle down, Jake. Ooh. Too much personal information. Yeah, we're excited. And he says, maybe I did it wrong, but these two taste together. Uh, together taste not good. So there you go. There it goes. So Jake yeah. is is the, is the guy who liked red more than the blue. And then he doesn't enjoy the Kovi as much. And again, so, that's cool to see. It's interesting, it's interesting isn't it? Just to yeah. see what people think. Yep. Yeah. Um, we have Christoph says, "Oh God, I want to make a joke about mixing those two, but I'm going to save it. I don't know what you're going to save it for, but this is totally not a PG channel, even though it is. And I would have read, I would read the comment. That's what I do on my channel. I read all the comments because I'm an idiot. Eric Gilbert says he had a Kuvi last night. What did you have, Eric Gilbert? You can't tell me you had a Kuvi, and then you don't tell me what the fucking Kuvi is. Uh, Christoph says you still flicking coins, Eric. Damn it." currency abuse you know what a i don't know what the fuck they, they love talking to one another uh christoph says dragon fruit tastes like elevator air it's an interesting tasting note i'm not sure that's uh appropriate earth says pomegranate is in there don't forget that yeah so you know pomegranate was one of the few fruits that we did forget to talk about and then christoph said elderberry again we didn't hit all the berries so uh chris says plug my channel uh because chris asked for it 
totally not going to plug his channel. Do not go to over on off the 10th and sub to Chris's channel. Mediocre reviews with terrible editing. And I should know my, my videos are fantastic and I'm the editing king. So I don't know. I don't know what you guys talk about. Uh, Jake says anything that's readily available is fine by me. Okay. Well, that doesn't help me, Jake. You got to, you got to, I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see. There's so many fucking beers I can do reviews with that. Everybody can get. It's just, do I want to drink them? And does anyone else want to buy them? Right. Right. Well, I'll, I'll do. I'll do a total Alex thing right now, Joe. If there's something I can't get, you can just send it to me. All right, we're gonna <laughs> done talk here. We're done talking. Hey, that, that, that's easier said than done. For like, well, that that's easier than anything for me to send it to you, Jazz. Here, you be vice versa for Craig and 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 Nick who are in Canada and or sorry, sorry, UK and Canada respectively. It gets a little bit pricey. It's a little bit pricey doing that. Um, Earth says, put a poll up on your channel so we can vote. Well, here's the thing, Earth. I don't want to be that guy, but I only have 418 subs according to Google right now. And to do polls on your channel, you need a thousand. So if you know 582 people that want to sub my channel tonight, feel free to let them know about it. And uh, then I can get a poll up. Otherwise, no, I just, just no polls. <laughs> I wish I could put a poll up, but that is, isn't that, that the dumbest thing? Why wouldn't they just allow people that have fucking one subscriber to put up a poll? I don't, what do you, who are you hurting in that situation? I don't understand YouTube sometimes. Yeah. It, that'd be the best way to go about it, put up a poll, right? Yeah. With one person, that'd be a win-win. Yeah, but you don't have an arbitrary number of viewers, so fuck you. Okay, good enough. Um, Jake says Earth might be onto something. No, that's a great idea, except for YouTube fucking hates uh, content creators that I don't create content. I'm just saying in general, they hate content creators. I'm not a creator of content. I do terrible fucking, I do terrible, terrible beer reviews. That's all I do. Um, Earth says boo, he's upset about that. Hey, Chris says, unsub for unable to pull. Well, that's not going to help me, Chris. That's not going to help me. Wow. I give you fucking other half beers, and this is how you treat me? You motherfucker. Yeah, I lost the subscriber just being on here, Joe. Good. That's what you <laughs> should do. That's why. Also, uh, what, what, do, what do all the, all the, all the fucking YouTubers that hit, hit, the, hit the like button and, and hit the notification bell? I think I said that at one point. I don't know. I don't know if anyone does that anymore. Um, Earth laughs at Chris's joke, and then Chris also laughs at Earth laughing at his joke, so... What a fucking clown show we got in the comment section right now. You know what I mean? Uh, Eric Gilbert, last comment I will read. So if anyone posts this after that, I'm, I'm sorry, because we're going to plug channels and then go over to the next channel. But uh, last comment says Eric Gilbert had Kuvabarik from Schneider Vice, son. Oh, yeah, he did. He did have that. Uh, if I could get that locally, I would totally review the shit out of that. So um, anyway, Chris says, do it. Sub to Joe. I lied. I guess I'll re read another comment because it's positive for me. Anyway. Um, so yeah, we reviewed Chimay Red, Chimay Blue, the Premier, the Grand Reserve. We are all we were all very favorable uh, towards both of them. The general consensus was we'd like the blue better, which I don't think comes as a surprise. Um, the Kuvi was pretty fucking delicious, aside from Jesse, who was not a huge fan, but he still gave it three seven five. Give a Nick out of five, still pretty good score. Um, I would say if you've never had either of these, you owe it to yourself to pick up both these plus the white. Those are like the three OG classic Chimay beers. Everybody should try them at some point. If you're in a craft beer and you haven't had the white, the red, and the blue, I don't know. You, 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 I, everybody should do it. I, anybody disagree? Like, I think everyone should do it, right? Like, yeah, it's uh, it's un-American. Oh, yeah. You need the red, white, and blue. Yeah, it's red, white, and blue, even though it's Belgium. <laughs> like, even if you're a craft beer fan, you should really try these at some point in your life. <laughs> yeah, if you're not a craft beer fan, you might actually like beer. Like craft beer, uh, trying one of these, you never know. Yeah, like I mean, back in the day, but like, cra I mean, craft beer, craft beer is kind of evolved Exactly. quite exactly. a bit uh, today than what it used to be, like like even eight years ago. But like, there was a point in time where like the most sought after beers weren't so much like the whales from all these mm -hmm. these great craft breweries. They were like the the the, sh the cream of the the Belgian crop. There was a point in time where like all these fancy Belgian beers are the best things you can get your hands on. Yep. And Ku and Chimay's beers, they were right up there with the best of them. Yep. And I, they I, still I, are excellent beers. And I think nowadays when it comes to craft beer, especially you know, in the North American scene, um, you know, everybody looks for their local brewery or their you know regional brewery or whatever is doing crazy shit. And, you know, I, I'm as guilty as the next. Like, I love other half and you know, a lot of other breweries. But, like, I, I go and revisit these beers and, like, German beers, like Eyinger, fucking makes outstanding world-class beers. And I don't pick them up. And then when I do, I'm sitting there, like, kicking myself in the ass. Be like, I, I reviewed Celebrator, or, like, you know, a couple months ago. And I'm just drinking. I'm like, this is fucking, this is an amazing beer that is essentially a shelter. German Doppelbox are still quite, yeah. quite incredible beers. 
Yeah, no, they are. And there's so many of them. And and just people don't drink them as much anymore. I feel like you should. You, you got to understand where craft beer was before it was even called craft beer. You know, it's, it was just, it's always been just beer, just different style. The history in a glass. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. when you think about like what craft beer is and what it's become, and it's always been something that used to it grew up imitating the styles of all these other countries that started like in Korea, imitating Belgian ales, imitating like German Hefeweizens or mm-hmm. Belgian whip beers or something like that. Like there's a reason why they, they, they imitate that kind of thing. And these are the OG beers. Yeah. Yeah. Beer has evolved. I, I think you were, that's what you were saying, Craig evolved. Like the yeah, beer has evolved. Time. evolved yeah. time. It's, I mean, these guys have been going like hundreds of years. Well, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't even know. It's only a couple hundred years and it's like, they stand the test of time and we're still going now. So that kind of give you an idea that they know what they're doing. Yep. Beers evolve, but you don't forget the OGs and the classics because they're, they're OGs yeah. and classics for a reason. People like these beers 20, 30, 40, 50, hundred years ago because they're fucking great beers. Exactly. And, and like you said earlier, Craig, when you're talking about the blue and about like you're giving it a five out of five and now, you know, this bottle today is four, two, five, but that doesn't, it doesn't do it. Yeah, exactly. It's just your palate, but there's, it's still an amazing beer. Is exactly. that's what it comes down to? It's still that's an not, amazing beer. That's not what the, the the standard of the beer is. That's just that's just this rubbish. Mm-hmm. You shitty, you know? you shitty palate. But these beers are they are world class. Yeah, well, yeah, I agree. All right, so uh, wow. I so first off, I'm going to thank everybody in the comment section. Uh, I like to plug people um, just because that's what I do as a uh, terrible, terrible beer tuber. Uh, but I will say thanks to Todd. Thanks to Jake. Jake, I think is the only guy that actually bought both beers and drank along with us. And I thank him. That's cool. It's really cool. I always say like, if you, if you buy the beer and you drink along or whatever, um, that's cool to see just, just, you know, uh, Jake's an awesome viewer comments on most of my videos. Good dude. Um, I'm going to have to meet up with him and have some beers in area at some point. He's only like an hour, 45 minutes away. So we'll get that done at some point, but, uh, cool that he, uh, that he picked up the beers and drank along with us. He was in the minority, liking the red over the blue, but still cool to see. Mm -hmm. So shout out to him. Shout out to Todd for showing up drunken one. Go check out Drunken One. He's a home brewer, does much stuff. Uh, Jeff, aka No Jinx, doesn't have a YouTube channel, but he hooks us up with great beers. Myself, and even Nick got one from him and uh, Red Beard and stuff. Good dude. Um, shout out to Alex the Beer Master and his uh, fucking sausage and uh, rice uh, dinner tonight. Shout out to Ryan from Beer by the Numbers, awesome channel, thousands of subscribers, great content. Although he hasn't been posting lately, so I don't know what's up with that. Shout out to Christoph four twenty, always a great commenter. Um, shout out to Red Beard, uh, even though he said like three things. And- and uh, thank Jeff for a beer. He didn't really participate at all, but he has a broken rib. Well, we'll you know, we'll allow it. Foamy had 13. He showed up earlier, said cheers. What's up, Foamy? And uh, thank you for, you know, stopping by. Shout out to Earth. He's the entire fucking planet. I don't know how many times I can make that joke. Uh, all the time. I can make that joke all the time. It's not a good joke. Shout out to you or Teku Murray, who was here for momentarily and then fucked off because that's what he does. Shout out to Chris from Off the Tenth. Uh, great. He needs more subs. Greg needs, or, um, Chris needs more subs for sure. 100%. Great editing, you know, good yeah, videos, shitty palette. General, great guy. Yeah, great dude. Shitty palette. But that's, you know, that's all of us, right? Uh, Eric Gilbert, always showing up, supporting. Good dude. Um, uh, Backwards Billy. Paul from uh, Backwards Billy, uh, you know, commented a lot. Backwards often. Paul. Yeah. Uh, Paul from PA Brew News. Um, you know, he likes to troll. That's what he does best. Uh, uh, Kyle from No Hype. I can't believe he showed up to my, I mean, yeah, he's a celebrity, not really, but I like Kyle. Kyle's a good dude. Uh, Patrick O'Shaughnessy showed up, said hi. I appreciate him. So, uh, Lee Russell, the former king of beer tube, showed up and crowned us. Uh, I don't know in which way, mostly Craig because he's the new uh king of beer tube. Nah. No, you are, you are. Don't fuck around, Greg. You're the oh, new king. Yes. Yeah, show up to Ethan. I thought he was dead, he's no longer dead, so that's good. <laughs> um, you also thought he was dead, right? Nick, I don't know, he's alive. Yeah, I don't know. He just pops up every now and then, like like uh, like a corpse in Paul's basement. Herpes, Jesus, like herpes. <laughs> God, PG fucking thirteen for fuck's sakes. Not really though. Um, and yeah, I guess I'll read the last comments. Fuck, I'm such a. I, why do I lie to myself? I I gotta read the comments. People comment. You know, I mean, I can't not. Read. Uh, so I'll read the last comments. Then you guys can plug your fucking channels. Uh, Chris says he's not a fan of the Belgian beers. That's fair, but also. You weren't also a fan of like high ABV beers like two years ago, and now you love them. So give them a chance, Chris. You will at some bucks. Uh, Eric Gilbert says, Physics Sons, you totally suck, Chris. I agree with both of those. Uh, Paul says, Hashtag fake news. Fake news? Fake news? Fake news. I don't know. 
I don't know. I'm hammered at this point. It's good times. Uh, Redbeard says, I used to detest everything Belgian. Kind of like them now. He kind of likes Belgians now, but he used to detest them. Hmm. Um, Christoph says, they use red, white, and blue because those are tastier than black, yellow, and red. Great. Uh, Paul says, Beard likes the beer, still hates the people. I, I believe that. Uh, Jake says, it's high time I tried these beers. This was a great time to do so. No, I think it's a perfect time to do so, for sure. Uh, Drunk One says, thanks, Joe. Jake says, and yeah, let me know if you're ever in the area. We'll hit up all the spots. We'll do, Jake, for sure. Uh, Eric Gilbert says, Belgium still makes the best beer. People who disagree, uh, he says, he says a word I'm not going to repeat. He says they're stupid, uh, is what I think he's getting at, and says bottom line. So he says, everybody who hates Belgian beers are stupid. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but I see where you're coming from. Uh, Chris says, thanks, Joe. Great show, bud. Thank you, Chris. Chris uh, Redbeer says, all the cheers. Ethan says, I'm still alive. Thanks, guys. Eric Gilbert says, solid 75% review, sons. Paul says, read this. You must. All the comments. Fuck you, Paul. And Ethan says, other half, maybe I pay cash and sexual flavors. I will take you up on that. So anyway, we are done reading all the comments. Sexual Even flavors. Super appropriate. Yeah, I want, to, I want to say I'm glad I didn't get sexual flavors in any Sexual of flavors? Who doesn't want sexual flavors? <laughs> I want sexual flavors or sexual flavors. Oh, damn, oh. that makes an interesting coovy. Hang on. <laughs> now, hang what on. Concoction. A concoction. Tastes like <laughs> tastes like herpes. Anyway, all right. So we're gonna uh, let we're gonna let everybody um let everybody fucking plug their channel because that's why you came here. And we'll start with uh, Jesse. Jesse, plug your channel. Whatever you want to say about it. Anything you got coming up? First, first off, I poured like near the bottom of that red, oh, and there was a ton of sediment that went in there. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, tons of old news. So, Cal change that. Play, you only have to poop in the morning, probably. Oh, Nick, uh, so my channel, uh, Bumpy Road Brewery. Uh, I, uh, I I don't do as much home brewing as I as I used to or as I'd like to do, but um, I do home brew. Uh, and then uh, to fill in the the huge gaps, no uh, sexual pun intended there. Uh, <laughs> sure about that? Uh, yeah. show my sure <laughs> sound like it. Dad I do uh, do uh, beer tasting videos in which now I'm incorporating a scoring system because I never scored them. I just taste them, kind of talk about what I was what I was picking up on. Um, I generally just uh, started off doing just the New Hampshire. Now I ventured out. Now I'm doing New England as well, and then every now and then I'll also pick up another beer. So doing stuff from all over. I'm just not going to constantly pick up yep. like other half or something. You know what I mean? Jesse's doing stuff. Quote, he's doing stuff. I do stuff on my channel. Does he does stuff? We all do stuff on our channel, and so does he. <laughs> That's all you need to know. He does stuff. Now go check him out. Jesse Jesse's he's, he's a good dude, as you can see. Very personable, good dude, uh, and good content too. And the the homebrew stuff I really like to see, you know, because you you will brew stuff here and there. I'll do a brew day and whatnot, and it's fun. I always like the even though I don't homebrew myself, I, I do enjoy watching it for for some reason. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh anyway, Craig, what, what kind of what kind of what kind of plug you got going on, buddy? No, it's, no, it's just it's all rubbish. It's, um, I, I kind of do some beer reviews and just gabble on and can't read and yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it, I, I quite like doing it. It's just it's a, it's a good like um, it's, it's like a video diary that I just put out there and let everyone else see how bad it is really, and let's go from there. I, I just, I've got a few things coming up. I'm going to be doing a lot more Belgian beers than we've been doing recently. I'm starting to get that, that kind of, I fancy a Belgian beer. I'm mean, going to add this the other day, um, the uh, Verdict, the, that one. It's like the Extra Ordinary IPA from, it's part of the um, uh, Duval kind of group. Um, more, more Gat, whatever it is, I can't Are you still Walker? Boulevard, the whole night. Yeah, that's awesome. yeah. yeah, 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 perfect. But yeah, and I'm so I'm, I'm doing that. I'm gonna start to do some kind of like brewery showcases from the, here in the UK, and maybe one or two in America coming up over the next sort of few months. Let's we'll, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, just if, just don't follow. It's easy. Anyway. That's yeah, Craig, Craig's very modest. Craig has a great beer tubing channel. He is uh, one of the Indeed. least pretentious uh, individuals I've ever seen when it comes to. Uh, to beer reviews, uh, very laid back, chill dude, great yeah, content. It's, 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 it's people's time's precious. Yeah, yeah, it's precious. I, I listen. I watch all your reviews because it's just worth it. Yeah, you got lots of time. Thank I watch everybody's, everybody in the channel. I watch the reviews. Why? I don't know. Nick, 
Nick will post fucking videos once every four months. Why? Why do I watch him? I don't know because you know he's fucking Nick. Um, but <laughs> anyway, go watch, go check out Craig. He he does great stuff. Kent yes. beer reviews. Like I said, all the links are in the description. Um, you can check them out. Click on it and then you hit subscribe and I guess you watch his videos after that. I don't know. I don't know how yeah, it works. Ring that bell. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, let's not get crazy. The bell. <laughs> That's very listen. Listen at that point, you're getting very personal and like you're committed. So I don't know about the bell. Subscribe the bell. Not so sure. <laughs> All right, Nick. How All about right. you, buddy? My my turn. Well, if you're curious about the craft beer scene in New Brunswick, Canada, which like maybe nobody is, but if you are do happen to be ha- curious about the craft beer scene in New Brunswick, Canada, come on over and check out Maxwell Stars Beer Review. I've been doing it for eight and eight. 0.25 years now or something like that uh joe thinks i'm og even though i'm i like I, i'm after og by like four years second generation og yeah second gen- <laughs> second g i'm second, like second g beer too which is still quite a bit older than everybody else here not that it means that my subscriber count is all that much more uh but i do review beers from like uh, obviously the maritimes in, in canada like new brunswick nova scotia pei but also like across canada as well as uh, whatever i can get my mitts off from the states and i just recently got back from the albino rhino beer fest like like joe did went to the well and piss up and uh, I've got some reviews coming from that as well, especially stuff with starring this guy, this great guy that has been doing this lovely podcast tonight, who does an amazing job at his beer reviews and very well structured. Even though it sounds like I'm blowing him right now, I do really think he does a great job. And thanks, Joe. Until whatever fuck so, clap on my channel again. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you I'm, 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 just, I'm just trying to embarrass him, but at the same time, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you still had it going, but you. Did you forget to plug beer, beer, beer Analysis 101 or were you going to do that? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we got Beer Analysis 101, which is a is a weekly series where we uh, every Wednesday night at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, we'll usually a few minutes late, but uh, uh, we'll go live and uh, we're not as professional as Joe, but we uh, we will usually go live and do the same beer every week. This week, we're actually doing Trailways Inception, which Joe has a can of. Yeah, I'll be on. And we'll be, uh, Joe will be on uh, Wednesday night and uh, check it out because we do really enjoy what we do, even if uh, we're not that good at it. That's cool. Okay, I'm not that good at it. You're better than me, Joe. Yeah, I'm darling. not sure what's happening. <laughs> yeah, let's let's not. No, beer analysis one on one is fun, uh, except for when Greg's there. He may he ruins everything in general. Greg's um, always there. Yeah, so I'll say one last time. Check out all these guys. Great stuff. Links in the description. Go subscribe if you haven't. Uh, Nick might be drunk right now. Um, he has a good channel, really good channel. And he is kind of OG, not really second G, whatever. Uh, he's been around longer than fucking all of us put together for the most part. Um, but yeah, uh, obviously you're here on my channel and you've probably <laughs> subbed. And if you haven't, I'd appreciate it if you didn't. If not, whatever, cool too. I uh, appreciate everybody stopping by for this live uh, quad review. Quad reviews, quad review. I'm going to do more of these. It's a lot of fun inviting other beer tubers, friends to uh, chat about beer. Um, damage. You know, as much as we kept it to Shemay and whatnot, we joke around. It's a good time. You're just sitting down, having a couple of beers with friends. And uh, yeah, not more you can really ask for. So once again, I will say thanks to everybody in the chat, everybody here who joined me, Jesse, Craig, and Nick. And uh, thanks to everybody. We will, I will be back next Monday. I don't know what we're going to do. I have no idea what I want to do, whether we have uh, people on it or not. I am usually structured in this situation. Totally not. So I guess we'll see. I'll probably put something up either Friday or Saturday. Whenever I make my decision, you will see it pop up on my fucking channel, uh, probably in your subscription feed. And then you can make your decision if you want to grab the beer that weekend. Um, I'd like to try to keep my Monday live beer reviews to uh, like readily available beers or beers that a lot of people can get. I try not to do like West New York beers or New York state beers because I feel like if you're watching somebody doing a live review and you can get the beer or you can get it at any point, you're going to watch it and you probably want to participate. So that's what I try to focus on. Clearly tonight we did two beers that pretty much everybody can get. And you know, you saw the turnout and you saw actually Jake pick up the beer and drink along. So we need more of that. Um, So yeah, appreciate everybody stopping by and until the next one. Bye.